All right, folks, so the Honorable Minister of Finance and Public Service, Dr. Nigel Clark, announced recently that the government will be introducing paternity leave in the public service. I said it uh, deliberately, paternity, because you know you get maternity leave. However, there will be conditions uh, such as fathers of newborns for a specific time and on specific terms. Attorney at law with Myers, Fletcher and Gordon, our good friend, Myers, Fletcher and Gordon, Gavin Goff, has joined us to give his take on the topic. Good morning, Gavin. Welcome to Smile. How are you, sir? Good morning, Evelyn Dale. I'm very good. Good to see you. I want to borrow off of that suit when you finish. No, time. man. Anytime you're ready, man. Anytime you're ready. Um, I, I am suspecting um, that overall you don't necessarily have a problem with this. Overall, I am no, thinking. No, no. Right. But there are some things in between the lines and stuff that you do have a problem with, right? I wouldn't say that. I think there's a discussion that's going on right now that's a little problematic. Um, people seem to be thinking that, you know, because um, the details yet haven't come out about how the paternity leave program would be administered and how many times you'd be eligible for it. You know, there's a discussion going on as to whether we even need to have something like this. And of course, the concept of the reputation of Jamaican men and the likelihood that Jamaican men might abuse it is part of the discussion where I don't really think it needs to be part of the discussion. So that's, I think, what we're kind of talking about and where my concern lies. Mm. Hmm. I, I was saying to them this morning, you know, if a woman applies for maternity leave physically, I have evidence mm. that she, yes. she is having a child. How would I then know that, okay, when you apply for paternity leave, you are in fact having a child? Are things like those gonna be, be included in this? Right. There, there, there needs to be something like that in terms of eligibility. Right. Um, in some places, the father's name needs to be on the pink slip or on the birth certificate to be eligible. Mm -hmm. In other places, once the mother's doctor, gynecologist, um, must sign off on the father's um, application for paternity leave. So we do have, have to have something in place uh, to support the application right uh, yeah what about which happens that I have a child with you know this lady in, in January and I get paternity leave and come December I have a child with another lady um, December you put it out <laughs> I just going to say March <laughs> um, but in a very in a very serious way how does that work do I go back and them say no man you get your leave already you know but this is another <laughs> child is, is is that an area of concern also it shouldn't be an area of concern as to whether we should have paternity leave or not. Yes, it is something which employers will be concerned about in regulating and ensuring that they don't expend um, disproportionate resources on, on fathers who are very prolific. You know, as the late Merciless would say, a long time we are all jealous. Um, but we really need to make sure that that discussion takes place after we actually have paternity leave in place. Um, because we can put in place rules to say that you can only get it once per you know, year. And if you can organize it so that your different baby mothers are all having children at the same time, then boy, more power to you. <laughs> really, really, Gavin, I don't know if that's more power. I, what? We're going to have a whole new discussion about that. I don't want to derail this conversation. I, I'm happy you said that. Yes. <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to take him to court. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and that would be one of the considerations because I, if I'm an employer, I, I couldn't have a member of staff. I mean, when a lady takes maternity leave, there is a, yeah. a thinking that she's never going to ask for it again until another, at least 10 months, eh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so you know you're going to get this out of her in terms of time and resources. So I right. feel that there still needs to be a lot more I's and T's that need to be dotted and crossed because you don't want to have a worker that's out for the whole year because he's having five children in a year. Absolutely. So, and we still don't know how much leave the Honourable Minister proposes to give. I suspect it's going to be on about two to four weeks. Yeah. Um, we're not going to see anything close to eight or 12 weeks for men. Um, so I'm not sure that we are, um, the concerns um, need to be so grave as they seem to be right now. Yeah. Can paternity leave be given before the child is born? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, that will be something which will have to come out in the rules which the government crafts. 
Mm. And again, this is only for the public sector at this point in time. This is not something which is applicable to anyone in the private sector unless you have an arrangement with your employer for, to that effect. Yeah. But yes, there are some employers who are presently offering paternity leave and they don't require proof that the child is actually born um, because they recognize that sometimes you need to be there supporting before that date takes place. Yep. How they verify that the person, that the man is really the expectant father? Um, well, I'm not entirely sure. That's going to be, yeah, there are a lot of considerations, Gavin, because I'm thinking what you just said, the idea is that they're going to offer support and bond with child and mother, but, but I mean, if Clive is in Kingston and child and mother is in Florida, Exactly. Mm, yes. Does he get paternity leave? Because the idea is that he's going to go support somebody and not that Clive going to stay home in Jamaica and make a call every morning and say, all right, and then go back to him bed to <laughs> sleep. Well, I mean, in a case that we are visiting relationship, all the more reason why you would need to take some leave off so you can travel to be with the expectant. But mother. how do I know you're uh, traveling, though? Are you going to have to show me travel, travel proof tra that you booked a ticket? How, would you, how do I know that I'm giving you leave and, and that, I, that's what it's going to be used for? And again, I mean, someone on social media said to me, let's not get into the weeds. Uh, we don't really go to mothers and say, listen, are you making sure that you are breastfeeding? Are you making sure you're taking care of your child and using your paternity leave exclusively for your child? Gavin, um, the, so mother, the really... child is with the mother, though, and the mother is repairing from delivery. So there are some physical considerations that you can't overlook. When it comes to maternity. Well, as, as you mentioned that, part of what the minister um, spoke about was also extending it to adoptive parents, adoptive mothers and fathers. Right. Um, so even an adoptive mother who would not have given birth would still be eligible once this policy comes into place to claim maternity leave. And they wouldn't be healing necessarily, but they would be bonding. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, paternity leave um, and parental leave overall is more than just healing from physical childbirth. A lot of it is about support and bonding with a newborn in those first weeks of life. Yeah, I don't know how much research you have done on this, uh, Gavin, so this might be an unfair question, but uh, mm -hmm. best practices, I mean, anything that we can talk about, what they do in other countries, anything like that? Or do you have any, um, um, any idea about what goes on elsewhere? Sure. I mean, I have been involved in this for a few years, so I do have some knowledge of, of, of best practices. Um, the local employers who are doing paternity leave, um, they are only offering a few weeks at a time. Um, they are limiting it to the number of, number of times per year that you can get it and the number of times you can get it during your employment with the employer. Um, they are checking to make sure that they, um, there is some documentation to support uh, that the person is, ex is an expectant father. Um, and beyond that, they are, you know, giving support wherever they can. And in this age of work from home, I think it's a little bit easier now uh, to be flexible with our um, parenting responsibilities. So, you know, beyond that, it's really a question of the particular rules that the employer will put in place that's right for their environment. Yeah. yeah. It's a good look, though, isn't it, uh, that we're talking that's about it? It's a very good look. It's a very good look. Where it's a step in the right direction, and I'm I'm hopeful that in time we will see a move to have this become law, and for the private sector as well to get on board. Yeah, yeah it's important for fathers. Gra grandfathers can get paternity leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, only those who wear pink suits. <laughs> yeah, you're the best man in the world. Thank you very much, sir. Good to that see is you. It's the worst because now we have to go represent you in an in unlawful dismissal claim, so I don't know. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. Blessings. God bless you Good and the family. Good to see you all again. Yeah, man, take care. Attorney at Law with Myers, Fletcher, and Gordon, Gavin Goff.